All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Smoke Dungeon. DB here. And I got a special treat for you. Today, I'm going to teach you how to play Axis and Allies Naval Miniatures. Um, one of my favorite games as a kid was War at Sea, Avalon Hill. I have like three copies of it still. And me and my brother play it every once in a while. Um, but because of that game, I've been hot for this since whenever it came out like 15 years ago. Um, it's a collectible miniatures game from Avalon Hill, uh, Wizards of the Coast. And it would come with blind booster packs with miniatures and then stack cards for them. It's a super easy beer and pretzels game. Um, but one of the cool things about it, y'all, honestly, is that you can use these miniatures for other naval games. Um, they're the perfect scale for... Uh, what's the victory at sea? Um, they're perfect for that. Um, but right here, in honor of Pearl Harbor Day, I got a real quick setup. I have the United States Navy versus the Kido Bantai of Japan. Um, over here for Japan, I have an Akagai with a Zero, a Jill, and a Kate. And then I have, uh, what is this guy? A Yuka, Yuka Kazi. And I apologize for my pronunciations, y'all. Um, and then I have a Jinsu and an Aizokazi. 102 points. Because how you play this game is you come up with a force equal to a certain amount of points. Your opponent does the same. And then you battle. And the first to um, a certain point total wins the game. Um, on this side over here for America, I have the USS Fletcher, Destroyer 445. I got Battleship 43, the USS Tennessee, a Tennessee. And then I got the old Salt Lake City, uh, CA-25, heavy cruiser. And then I have CBL-23, the Princeton, Jersey represent, with a Dauntless and a Devastator for 102 points even. Um, the first thing I want to say is these forces, the force composition of these is total friggin' rubbish, dude. Um, I took them out of a pile of stuff I have for trade and sale. Um, because like I said, I'm so crazy for this game and I have always been that, uh, even though it's not the best game, but it is fun, um, that I have like, well, I have every ship ever produced by Wizards. I have some 3D printed ships. Um, there's a place called the Forum Mini, which is like the where this game lives online. And they release their own decks. I have all of those as well. Um, you can, however, still find models for sale at certain online stores. And you can even find the starter set, which comes with weird uh, US and Japan and a rule book and paper maps. This map is actually an old Gale Force 9 map that I got at Gen Con probably in 2006 or 2008, a long time ago. Um, and they only made very few of them, I think like 10 or 15 maybe. And I have two of them. I bought two of them back then. Um, so anyway, without further ado, this is how it works. You have a ship stat card. Has all your ship name, points, what kind of ship, the year it was commissioned, speed, which is usually either two or one, and then you have a gun icon, an anti-aircraft, depth charge, torpedo are the ones, and then you'll see a series of numbers, zero, one, two, three, that's the range, how many squares, and this is how many dice you roll. Um, for torpedoes, only six is hit. For all these other ones, a six counts as two hits, and a five and a four is one hit. Um, and then down here, you have your ship's defensive stats. Of armor, that's um, the number that the opponent needs to beat to score a hit. The vital armor, if they score that many hits, your ship is Yahtzeed and instantly sunk. And hull points is how many hits your ship can take. Um, when you're on your last hull point, you're crippled. And your stats go down by one. Fours are no longer hits. Your speed goes down. Excuse me. Um, 
I'm, I also apologize. I got the dryer running. You know, DB's trying to kill two birds with one stone here. Um, and then you have your ship special abilities. For instance, this destroyer has night fighter and long last torpedoes. This is what set they're from. And then on the back, you'll either have um, some fluff, some historical fluff about the ship and a nice little image. So yeah, I'm gonna walk you through how to play real quick. All right, so the first thing you do is each, uh, each team, oh, these are the objectives in the middle. They are worth, each one of these is worth half the amounts of points of the game. So since this is 102 points, these are worth 51. And it basically becomes a rush to the center if you play as how the rule book is written without any special scenarios. So the first thing you do is determine initiative. Whoever wins initiative goes second because that way they'll get to see where the other guy's going. And then the gunnery phase, the attack phase, is all simultaneous. So even if your stuff gets sunk by the other guy, you're going to get the shoot back. Um, the only thing you add to your initiative is either special rules or flagship bonuses. Um, you can see right here, the Akagai is a flagship two, so it will add two to the dice roll. The Jinsu is also a flagship as well, but you only add your highest. And then on the American side, I have, uh, no flagship. So they're just going to be a straight 2d6. Japan will be 2d6 plus two. So total of five and then boxcars for the Americans. Things are looking up. So the very first thing you do is the sea movement phase. Japan has to move first. All their ships move too. So we're gonna go one, two, and then one, two, one, two. Then the American phase. These fellas are gonna move two. The Fletcher will move two. The Tennessee has a special rule called slow two. So I got to roll one die, and on a one or a two, he's minus one speed. Nope, he's good. So he is also going to go into here. To Tennessee. All engines full ahead. Um, all right. Then it's the air missions phase. So we're going to do the air missions phase, and you alternate placing um, attack aircraft. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a dive bomber over here on these guys. The aircraft have an unlimited range. They can go wherever they want. Now over here, we're gonna throw a torpedo bomber on that guy. Then the Japanese will retaliate by placing a fighter over here to attack there. And the Americans will then oop, throw a dive bomber over there. Now, torpedo bomber. All right. That's your air placement phase, you alternate. You can also have land-based aircraft, which could come in, but I have none of those in this game. Um, then we do the air defense, and you go by square to square. So each ship will get at least one AA shot. Some ships have multiple AA. So the very first one we're gonna do is gonna be the Fletcher. And on his card, he has an AA of six. So he's gonna pick who he wants to shoot at. And he is going to shoot at that Kate Torpedo Bomber, which has an armor of five. So, and you can see this is a horrible roll. These are all misses, and then that's two successes, but he needs a five to damage the Kate. So no good there. Then the Tennessee. He rolled seven. What do you got, Tennessee? Uh-oh, there's a good one. He's going to shoot at the same guy because I didn't say so there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine successes on the Kate, which only has a vital armor of seven. So the Kate is destroyed. Our first victim, our first catch of the day. Um, and I apologize because now my neighbor is apparently doing some drill work in his basement, which is bleeding on over through. So this, however, the Jill will get through and get a torpedo attack on one of those ships. We'll move over to AA here. First, we have the Zero. The Zero has a couple of special rules. Um, surprise, on the first turn of his game, he rolls one extra die. So he's going to start at seven, and he will be up to eight. However, the Akagai can add one die 
for an expert dog fighter. So he is gonna do that as well. Um, see, you, the special rules can be kind of tricky. So, the Devastator Torpedo Bomber has a special rule called draw the cap, and on a four or higher, I have to attack him. So, yep, here comes the zero at him. And the zero is pretty rubbish. He only got three successes, which the Devastator has a four, so that's not enough. The zero misses. However, I have the two Japanese ships left. The Jinsu, Japanese ships, notoriously bad on the AA. That bleeds over into this game. He only has five dice. He's going to try the Devastator as well. Uh, one success, so no luck there. This could be a very short game. Um, and then the Isokazi is there as well. And he has five dice as well. He'll try the same thing. Oh, there's some hits. Look at that roll, boys. So that's a seven, which is enough to breach the vital armor of the Devastator, blowing him up. He goes over here. All right. However, now all our anti-aircraft attacks are done. So now we go to attacks. Each side has one through. So let's go. Uh, the Japanese had initiative. So we'll do their bomber first. And the Jill bomber has three torpedo attacks. However, the Aka guy also has expert torpedoes, which can add a torpedo to somebody. So here's four torpedoes, and we're gonna go at the Tennessee. Now, torpedoes only hit on a six. However, they normally do two points of damage. So let's see if we can drop some sixes. Nope, four misses. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Some evasive action and the Tennessee is through. Now, however, we have the Dauntless, and he is going to attack the Jinsu. And he normally rolls 10 dice for his bomb. So you'll see that this gets pretty nasty pretty quick here. Um, and the Princeton has expert bomber, so he can add one. So this is an 11 dice attack on the poor Jinsu. Oh, Jinsu, you're in trouble. So here is, Jesus, that's loud. There is five, six, seven, this is 10, 13 is the total success rate on that Dauntless Bomb. The poor Jinsu only has an eight vital armor. So Jinsu is destroyed. <laughs> then we would go to the surface attack phase. Range three is the greatest for surface attack, unless battleships, some battleships can shoot out to range four and five. So, the Tennessee can shoot to range four. One, two, three, four. That's no good. So, there is no surface attack phase. Then we would go to what is the submarine phase. They have their own phase. And the submarines, I have no submarines in this battle, so there is no submarine phase. So we then go to the air return phase. And this guy goes back to here. He goes back to here. And he goes back to here. Then, it's the end of turn. If you have an objective, you would take that marker. Um, you would remove any models that are destroyed, etc. However, I like to um, remove them as they go and activate. So, that's something DB does himself. Um, Alright, so then you just rinse and repeat. And that, in a nutshell, is how you're playing some Axis and Allies naval miniatures. So the Japanese, uh, 10, and they get two for the Akagai, so that's a 12. Over here, six. So the Americans are gonna be going first to see if the Tennessee is slow. On a one or two, he can only move one. Three, he's good to go. So these guys are gonna move right up next to the objective. And then, we're gonna move these guys right up into here. Oh, thank you, the drilling stopped. The drilling stopped, y'all. Who knows, maybe I'll have to redo this video. I really don't want to. Um, this guy is gonna try the end around and sneak over to here. And then 
and this is where this gets a little weird because historically you would never like charge with an aircraft carrier but since it's a snatch and grab beer and pretzels game that's what you do and uh you know what the akagai actually has real guns in this game um because she did carry a few i mean it was pretty much useless but the way this game is statted it's actually pretty nice um so there we go there's our movement phase we would then go to the air mission phase America goes first. They're going to throw this bomber at this guy who's sneaking around. Japan will throw a fighter at him. And then Japan is going to try and torpedo these dudes. So the first thing we'll do is anti-aircraft. And we'll go over here. The Princeton is actually really good on the anti-aircraft with eight dice. So, uh, I, of course, DB jinxed it. Four. That is not enough to abort the Jill. The Jill has five armor. Uh, the Salt Lake City only has six dice, so let's go with that one. Oh, there's a much better roll. So four successes, five successes, six successes, seven. Is the Jill destroyed? No, she is not, because she has a vital armor eight. But since we beat her regular armor, she is what is called aborted, which means she will not get to attack. Uh, fancy little uh, Gale Force 9 token there for you. Um, over here, our zero will take seven dice, and then he will get one for the Atagai. And see what he can do against this Dauntless. Oh, look at that horrible roll, y'all. What rubbish. Rubbish DB is a horrible roller. Two successes. Clearly, that ain't shit. Um, then we have the Isokazi over there. So he is five dice. Let's see if he can do something. Three successes. Again, not enough to abort our Dauntless, who is about to smash down for ten dice plus one for expert bomber on this poor Japanese destroyer. Uh, da, 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 four, five, six, seven. That's not actually, that's a pretty bad roll for that many dice. However, Isokazi only has a seven vital armor, so he is also destroyed. And since casualties are removed at the end of every phase, he will not get to shoot this turn. Um, there is no more air combat. So then we move to the surface phase, y'all. The surface attack phase. The Americans went first, so they're going to go first. Um, the Princeton has no guns, y'all. Zero. Straight zero. So unless you have a special rule to buff her, she is not making any attacks. Um, however, the Salt Lake City is right here. And he is one, two, three, range three. And he has main guns and secondary guns. His secondaries don't have range, but he does roll seven dice at range three. So he is going to take a shot on our Yukikaze. Oh, yes, he is going to take a shot on him. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Jesus. All right. The Yukikaze only has a seven vital armor. So he is destroyed. However, he will get to attack this turn before he sinks to the briny depths. Um, over here, we have the Fletcher. Now, the Fletcher is only two away from the Akagai. So that is only the Fletcher's a destroyer, so he only has three dice. And that's three. The Akagai has an armor of five, so no luck there. And then... The Fletcher's torpedoes only go to range one. So there he is done. He cannot make a torpedo attack. However, the Tennessee at range two is a battleship. And he has 14 dice. So the Akagai is in trouble here. The Akagai has an armor of five and a vital armor of 11. Let's see what the Tennessee can do. Oh boy. Oh, it's going to be close. So, let's move these misses out of the way. A lot of twos I'm rolling today. 
Oh, I'm going to miss by one, I think. So here is six successes and then four for a total of ten. So the Akagai is still around because he is a vital armor of 11. And then he has four hull points. But he will take one damage, y'all. And then the Tennessee at range two can throw a four dice secondary attack. And that got three, which is not enough. All right. Then we jump on over to the Japanese. So first things first, we'll shoot our destroyer who is dead. At range two, he gets four dice with his main guns. He will shoot at the Fletcher. And he will get two hits. And the Fletcher is armor three. So that is a miss. Then he at range two gets two torpedo attacks and he will shoot both of those at the Tennessee. And he needs sixes, but he missed them both. And he has long lance torpedoes, y'all, which means they do three hits. So he is dead as well. All right, Japan, way to go. Uh, the Akagai at range two has main guns and secondary guns. He has a six dice attack. He will throw that on the Fletcher. Actually, you know what? One, two, three. He will go at range three. He will throw five dice on the Princeton. An ill-advised move. Well, he missed anyway. One. One is not good enough. And then his secondary guns at range two will fire here. Three dice. Two is not enough to hurt the Fletcher again. Then we would return our aircraft. So he would go back here. As would he. And he would go here. Then we rinse and repeat, gentlemen. Or ladies, if there's any ladies watching. 8 plus 2 is 10. And a 9. So the Americans must move first. Slow 2. He is good to go. You can only have two ships in a square um, from one nationality. So these guys... We'll move to here. Uh, the Japanese will, um, I mean, what the heck? He'll just move in here, right? Even though that's kind of silly. But this game is pretty much already decided. Um, the air mission phase. I told you these forces were goofy. So the first thing we're going to do is, actually, you know what? For simplicity, I will leave him here. He will come in here. He will go here. And then the torpedo bomber will go there. So, anti-aircraft, the first thing we're going to do, Salt Lake City is going to fire on that torpedo bomber above it. And one hit. That is rubbish. So that torpedo bomber is going to get through. Over here, my zero is seven plus an expert dogfighter. So he is eight dice. Here he comes. My zero is kind of rubbish, y'all. One, two, three, four. Four is not enough. The Dauntless has armor five. So the zero has missed. Now it is up to the noble gunners on the Akagai herself. And she is only seven dice. Mm, she also has missed with only three successes. So it becomes the air attack phase. I will do this Jill. The Jill will roll four torpedoes on the Salt Lake City. Hoping for a brace of sixes to sink her. Uh, there's one hit. So that's one hit through. The Salt Lake City has three hull points. She's going to take two, so she'll only have one left. So she will be crippled. However, she does have a special rule where she can repair herself. Because the Salt Lake City was known for getting battered and coming back. The old sway back she was. Um, over here, my Dauntless is 10 dice, y'all. And then it's one more for the Princeton's Bomber. 11 dice on the Akagai. Oh, Akagai. Uh, that's going to be close again. Six, one off. So 10. So the Akagai will take another damage. Doo 
<laughs> and then we go to surface attack phase. Now these damages, since it's a new phase, will take effect. So America goes first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just to get it over with, I'm gonna shoot the Tennessee. And that's gonna be 15 dice at the Akata. And, oh, I bumped the camera there, y'all, sorry. Oh, this is a cracked die, we'll re-roll that one. And it was still a one. Yahweh says, fuck you. Um, four, six, ten, uh-oh, twelve. Six and six is twelve. You know what that means. The Akagai only had an eleven. So she is instantly vital then destroyed. Which means I don't need to shoot any more of these. But before the Akagai sinks, she can shoot. So she is one away. She will shoot the Fletcher for seven dice. See what we can do. Oh, there's a hit at least. So five. And that will cripple the poor Fletcher. And then she will shoot her secondaries at it as well. Which is only four dice. But it's worth a shot. Um, and that is four more hits on four fours, which will destroy the Fletcher. And she is destroyed as well. Then it would be the, um, surface return, or the air return phase, I apologize, because there is no more surface action or submarines. And because this aircraft carrier was sunk, these guys have to roll, and on a one, they also are destroyed as they cannot return to the carrier and must return to the land air base. So, yeah, one of them is destroyed. I forgot to call them, so we'll just say that's the zero went down. And then the Akagai is destroyed as well. This guy would go back to the Princeton. This dude would then go over here to where there is a land air base. But I could not use him next turn because when you are at the air base, the turn, you only go every other turn. So he would get a rearming counter. Then it would be the end phase. We would remove these fellas right here. And then the Americans would achieve both of these objectives because they are not contested. To contest an objective, you must have a surface ship either in that zone or adjacent to it. So... That would be the end of the game, and the Americans would have done a crushing victory over the Japanese. Um, so the opposite of Pearl Harbor. But you know, just teaching y'all how to play accident and analyze naval miniatures. Um, it's a great game. There are, I think there are a couple hundred models that they produced for it. Um, like I said, you can find them online. There's plenty of people that trade them on Facebook or I can't recommend the four mini um, high enough. It's a great place, great community. I've been a part of it for many, many, many years. It's full of lovely people who are obsessed with this game um, as much as I am. So I plan to actually show you more battles of this game um, with like real forces that aren't pretty janky and everything like that. Um, because as you know, DB is obsessed with World War II naval warfare because my grandfather uh, fought in the Second World War, uh, both in the Pacific and the Atlantic. And he was actually in the Navy before the war in the 30s. So, yeah. Um, and I grew up being told some of those stories and found out other stories as I got older. Um, and it just hooked me, you know. Can't go wrong with it. So everybody, I hope you enjoyed my Axis and Allies Naval Miniatures. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it. You know what? I love it. So I think you should too. But be good to one another and do what you feel.